Aloha everyone! In this month's edition of Sanity's What's New video, we've got a handful of new features and things to showcase. We've got the engineers behind these features to talk about and demo them. So we'll cover updates to TypeGen, auto-updating for the Sanity Studio and deploying multiple studios, support for animated images in the asset pipeline, and updates to the copy and paste feature in the studio. Let's get right to it. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. Can you actually introduce yourself? Hey, yes. Uh, my name is Sindra. I'm a staff software engineer here at Santi. Cool. And you and your team have been working on TypeGen. Can you explain a little bit about what that is? Yeah. Uh, TypeGen is a way uh, for you to be able to get typed queries based on your Grok queries that you will write in your code base and your Santi Studio schema. Uh, so we wanted to kind of match the experience that you currently get with using other query languages like GraphQL, uh, but in a native Santi. Uh, world. So there was a community contribution that actually led to adding a new function, define query for TypeGen. Can you actually tell us about that? Yeah, uh, Romeo from our uh, Slack community reached out on, well, both on GitHub and on Slack. Now, if he can contribute to expand a future set in, in TypeGen. Yeah, so I can share my screen and show you how it works. Um, so here you see how you would, up until now, kind of uh, type your queries, you would first define your query or you'll write your query here uh, using the Grok template control. And that will then generate generate the settings queries, query result in Santi.types. You would then import it and you would assign it to the fetch. So the settings that you get back here is the generated type. Uh, however, uh, with the new, a new method introduced, define query allows you to write your query in the same way, but we can automatically infer the the generated type. So you no longer need to assign the type from the generated file. That will automatically be done for you uh, by TypeScript. This is less error prone uh, and you still get all the powers of types. Cool. So this just seems like a much better developer experience for sure. Yeah. Uh, you can, for example, assign wrong, wrong uh, type to your fetch uh, without any kind of errors until you test it, uh, now it will just work. Nice. Well, thanks, Romeo, in the community for this contribution. Yes, thank you. Hey, Rico, could you introduce yourself? Hello, uh, my name is Rico, and I'm on the studio team. Uh, and we've been building uh, some, some nice new features. Yeah, so you're actually going to cover two of these awesome features. And one is auto updates for the studio, and the other one is deploying multiple studios. Mm -hmm. So they kind of go hand in hand. Can you tell us about them? Yeah. Uh, so right here, I have the sanity.cli ts file, and this is uh, a special config file if you're unfamiliar. Uh, and it lets you um, change some CLI options uh, for the deploys and, and whatnot. So in here, we have uh, two new options for y'all. Um, there's auto updates true. And this is something that um, Benoit went over last time in the last update video. Uh, and if you enable auto updates, this makes it so that um, the bundle that uh, Sanity will end up creating, uh, it kind of splits it out. So half of it is your code, the user code, and the other half is um, uh, the stuff that we host. Uh, and it makes it so that whenever you deploy a studio, um, the, you'll have part of that studio um, come from us. Uh, and you'll get auto updating features and all that good stuff. Uh, this week, um, we wanted to show you this one. This is Studio Host, um, and we'll show what this does in just a bit. Uh, so this is for um, multi-studio deploys. So we're now letting you um, have multiple deploys uh, on our own um, host infrastructure uh, for um, studios. So I can go ahead and open this and just go do a deploy real quick. You'll see that it hasn't been assigned a studio host name just yet because I added this. But then after it's done, it grabs that studio host name if it's free. We should have an auto updating studio. All right, so now we have a studio deployed right here. We can click and open it. There's our studio. And uh, we added a new feature in Manage as well, so you can track all of your studios. If I refresh the page, we'll see we just deployed this one. 
Uh, and in here, you can kind of have a nice overview of all the studios that you've deployed. Uh, and it gives you the version. So if you deployed a certain version, you want to make sure that those are up to date. Uh, you can see them here. But I think that's just about it. Uh, there's not too much to this. So we just allow you to take um, any sort of host name that you'd like. Uh, you can specify multiple per project now. Um, and you can pair this with the auto updates flag if you'd like. Uh, you can do fancy things as well. Like maybe you can use uh, environment variables for studio host uh, and um, maybe have a conditional on auto updates for here as well. Hey, Espen, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Espen. Uh, I work as a principal software engineer here at Sanity and have been here since the start of the company. Cool. Yeah, so we now have support for the animated images in the asset pipeline. And you're here to tell us more about that. Yeah. Maybe I should start by introducing the image pipeline for those who don't uh, know about it yet. So um, it works uh, as you would expect uh, in the Sanity Studio or through the API, you can upload images. So if I now upload one of these images that I have locally, will be made available on our CDN uh, under a URL. And uh, it will show a little preview here. Uh, and then once this image is available, uh, you can access it on a URL such as this. And this will uh, allow you to add all kinds of uh, image transformations that we've documented here in our documentation. So this can be things like the most obvious ones are, of course, uh, resizing the image. So uh, for instance, in, in this case, this is a pretty large image. Uh, by default, it's 6,300 uh, by 4,700 pixels. Uh, but if I want to, I can scale this down. So I can say I want it to be 1,024 by 668, so 768. Or I can add uh, other transformations, such as uh, blurring to this thing. So if I want it to be really blurred, I can do that. And if I want to flip it, I can flip it horizontally or vertically uh, or both, uh, all kinds of transformations like that. You can also do things like saturation. So if I want this to be a black and white image, you can specify a saturation equals minus 100. So there's all kinds of these uh, nifty little things that you can do with this, which is uh, important to get your images uh, being scaled to the right size on your website and being delivered as quickly as possible. And now with the latest change, uh, we've introduced support uh, for animated images. Uh, so in the past, you would see something like this. If you uploaded a GIF or a WebP image that was animated, you would only get a single frame of it unless you asked for the full size image. But with a new animation support, uh, you will simply get the full image uh, and you can still use the same transformation. So I can scale this down. I can um, uh, I can do all the regular uh, manipulations that you would expect. But in addition to that, you can also, if you really want to specify a, oops, uh, you can also specify a frame equals one parameter to get back the old uh, static image support should there be a case where that makes sense. And that's about it. Uh, support for GIF and WebP. Uh, and of course, there is there are some limits to how long of an image or uh, sorry, long of a video, uh, I guess you could call it, uh, we support. So if you have a very large uh, image with a lot of frames, uh, then you might get a, a static image back if it exceeds that maximum size. That's super cool. And this is going to be very useful for anybody who wants to have animated images in their on their website. Um, is there a trick on how to start using this or? Uh, it will just start working, honestly. Uh, if you have an animated WebP or a GIF image uh, uploaded already, those will now start to be animated. Uh, and any new uh, images will, of course, be animated as well. So the only real change that you need to be aware of is that if you do want the sort of, I guess, slightly unexpected behavior of having a static image instead of an animated image, then you should be adding the frame equals one parameter to your URLs. Got it. OK, so pretty straightforward. Add in the animated image, and it will stay animated. Yep. Cool. Thanks, Espen. Thanks.
Hey, Fred. So you were actually on our What's New video from last month, but can you introduce yourself again? Yeah, sure, Cap. Uh, I'm, I'm Fred. Uh, I'm an engineer at Santi, uh, working on the Santi Studio, among other things. Cool. So last month, you demoed the copy and paste feature for the studio, and there was a lot of love for it. But there was one major feature request that everyone seemed to be requesting. It has to do with arrays, right? Yeah, correct. Cool. Could you demo that for us? Yes. Um, so in Senti, you can uh, have an array of contents, uh, like objects, and people uh, use them a lot for page builders, for example. And page builders can contain a lot of different fields. And before we added this new feature, uh, you would have to copy every individual field manually if you wanted to let's say reuse this in in a different document or even in the same document but in in a different array that have the same type right like you would you you all probably know how yeah <laughs> how awesome that is um yeah. uh, with this new addition you can actually click on array items like individual oh i'm trying to click my a different thing so you can click um individual array items and and just copy that and then if i switch over to a, a separate document you can just drop it in there and before oh. you couldn't do individual items in the array you would have to, you would just do the whole array exactly you would have to copy the whole array and like often you would find that you you only want that one thing and you don't want to overwrite the other mm -hmm things already in there. So with this, you you can. Um, so it supports like uh, objects, reference, like all the all the stuff you want to put in, in arrays. So also this is like a, a different object in a, in a different uh, array. Let me see if I can plop it in here. Let's see. Wow. And these array items can get pretty nested. So you're like, you could grab a little bit of a con of content or thousands of bits of content i don't know exactly exactly it, um it could be as nested as you, as you want it yeah be. and as you saw it took like two seconds or yeah. something like that <laughs> yeah and before like you'd have to go in and take like each line little by little put it in and so this and being more specific in the right like you just want that one item is also very nice because sometimes you only need like three of the 18, you know. Exactly. This friendly giant, I only want that one. That's awesome. Great new uh, addition to the copy and paste feature. Yeah. Hope, hope you all like it. And there you have it. Sanity's newest features and releases all demoed by the engineers behind them. To keep up to date on these releases, keep an eye on our changelog at sanity.io slash changelog. And then you can come find the Sanity team and community members in our Slack community at slack.sanity.io. I'll see you all next month with another What's New video. Until then, happy coding, happy content creating.